So a while back I made a video about this gold SG here called Why I Love This Guitar and um, it's a series that I didn't want to force and just create content with until, you know, I felt like <laughs> it because um, this is about how a guitar can make you feel and why it makes you want to play it as much as possible. And today I'm talking about this green baritone guitar here, the Castadosa Conchas Baritone. <laughs> In general, I love all the guitars that I have, but there's something about a few of these instruments that particularly call out to me that I want to pick them up as often as possible. And if I were to play live, which I do hope to do one day, that these would be the guitars I would take. I would take the Gold SG, and I would take this, and there's one or two more that we'll make videos about, as well as the amps uh, that I would play. And these are the ones that go above a sort of academic interest that I have, you know, like a nerdy guitar interest that I have in all of this stuff that I have in this room. These are the ones that are more personal. When I received this uh, baritone, it was around my birthday time and um, my wife bought it for me. So initially that was the contact that I had with this guitar. It was something super special and it came about because I was playing my other baritone, which is a Revolta one. That's um, Dennis Fano, you know, Novo company, uh, Revolta. I was playing that and my wife came in the room and she was like, what is that? That is so cool sounding, so nice sounding. And she wanted, she wanted to sit and listen, which I have to say doesn't happen often with me playing the guitar for my wife to want to come and listen. Normally she just finds it like loud and a bit of a noise. And one day she saw me sort of looking at this guitar online and it, didn't think I could really buy it, it was pretty expensive, um, but I was fascinated by it and having heard it on the Anderton's channel, I was just, you know, looking at it a few times a day and she saw that and said, I'm gonna buy it for you for your birthday and it, you know, that was an amazing thing to, to do. So um, I love it for that reason, but when it turned up, I held it in my hand and it just immediately felt like an instrument that a person has made out of love and with absolute attention to how it would feel to play and what could make it a musical instrument that would last for a very, very long time, be played to make music, hopefully. And I sort of feel lucky to have it, really. It's one of those things. You know, there's, Castadosa has only started this year, and Carlos and his wife, um, Carlos was a Fender master builder. He's, you know, made guitars for the likes of Eric Johnson, Eric Clapton, and, and um, it's very, sort of brave of him to have spread out on his own. He's not an older guy, he's a younger looking guy, as far as I know, <laughs> and he wanted to do this because he just loves it so much.
so let's have a look over this guitar and what is it what what goes into making this guitar so it's a baritone and that means it has a longer scale length and um I'm playing it in open C. You can choose various tunings. A lot of people put it in standard tuning, but tune down to sort of B or something like that. And uh, so it's got a low resonant voice. Depending on how you tune it, the resonance of the strings can change and it can just have the most gorgeous overtones. And the whole room, if you're playing through you know, a decent amp, the whole room just sort of resounds and vibrates to the sound of this instrument. I particularly love the pickups here. So these are wound by Carlos's wife. She winds all the pickups. And although I can't compare them to anything because I haven't put them in a standard guitar, I would love to try doing that one day and just see what happens. There's two humbuckers and a mini humbucker. You can also get this guitar with P90s and I think you, know, you can customize it to have what you want. Um, he even makes a guitar where he puts a fuzz pedal inside with a switch or you know, a fuzz mechanism. Um, these pickups just have this sort of rootsy Americana thing that calls out for slide guitar. And um, they really roll off the top end so beautifully when you, you know, with the pedals I'm using, with the slide and everything, it just sort of creates this sort of soundscape that is not brash and it keeps the low overtones, but it also, the guitar pushes, I, I would say it's quite, it's got a lot of upper mids, mids and upper mids, which is great in a baritone. You don't want it to be too muddy. And if I was to play it in a band context, which I'd love to do one day, um, I think it would be able to come through the mix nicely. And um, that's the sort of most important thing for me about this. This is an instrument that wants to be heard um, and it can be. So in terms of the specs of this guitar, these baritones are made of alder. They've got really comfortable calves and contours to them. It's a really comfortable shape. And um, they also have a mastery bridge, which I, I don't actually use the tremolo, but what I know about mastery bridges, having used them before, is that they will keep in tune really well and they give you a lot of options and ways to set up the guitar the way you want it. Um, and actually that's something I still need to do. I, I hear in the recordings, um, sometimes the intonation is not spot on. Um, and I think the action needs lowering, but by using a bridge like this, it really gives you a scope to, to do whatever you need to do. I really love all the tortoise shell on here. I'm actually talking with Carlos at the moment. I want to replace this with a pink tortoise shell um, just because I do this pink guitar project, charity project. Um, it's nice for me to have sort of things that have pink on them and I can use them on Instagram um, and help to promote my charity fundraising. But um, he's happy to do that uh, with me at the moment. So that's really cool. And on top of that, whatever you think of relicking, I think he's gone tasteful here. It's not over the top. It's a sort of medium relicking and it just made it feel like even though this is a really expensive guitar I don't have to be too careful with it and that's one of the things I love about relic work is it just takes away that pain of your first scratch and it makes you feel comfortable. So it's a maple neck with a rosewood fretboard it's got binding and it's a 27 inch scale length with a 12 inch radius it's really comfortable um, for slide I like that it's got that slightly flatter radius it makes it a bit easier and um, it's not a huge neck, you know, it's bigger in proportions than a standard neck, but it's comfortable, not too fat at the back and just allows you to get your hand round. Um, and then they've used Jeskar frets and um, you can tell just by looking, they've not, he's not cheaped out on anything. It's a very beautifully made guitar. Okay, so that's what the guitar is. That's where the guitar came from. Why do I love it personally? Um, it's the only guitar I've got that I would feel confident standing up on a stage and playing for five or ten minutes. You know, as a guitar player that's been playing for under three years, it would I would be terrified of playing in front of people. I did, when I was younger I played guitar and I did play in front of people, but I had a 17, 18 year gap. And, you know, with the self-consciousness of age, I would feel nervous playing in front of people, playing in front of a crowd. When I picked this up, with a slide and just go for it with this beautiful open tuning. It's one of the few times where I can just hit record and I tend to not fluff things up too much. Um, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, it inspires me, I want to create music and I'm really considering trying to get three or four tracks developed that I can turn into a, into a short record. Um, and even just honing my skills and becoming a better slide player, learning new voicings. And all of that is because of this guitar. There's somewhere where you and the instrument meet in the middle and sometimes 
out of the blue you can find a whole new inspiration and that's you know I do get comments on this channel which I understand about oh you know weren't you happy with this and you've got a lot of guitars and oh another new amp and you know I'm always looking for inspiration I'm we all work differently I've got um, I'd say I'm quite a quick learner I've got a quick brain but I don't have a very long attention span compared to some people um, and I probably do need different things to stimulate me all the time but as I'm going forward in this journey I am developing a sort of um, bond with a few guitars that are making me feel more inspired musically as opposed to thinking about the gear um, that we can talk about in another video and especially with an amp that I'm playing at the moment that just makes me zone in and focus and feel like I want to create music that's what this guitar is it's a guitar that makes me want to create music and if that's that's the best thing I can say about a guitar. Um, it wants to be played, I want to play it. I love this thing. And if I can develop as a musician over the next five, 10, 15 years and forever, uh, I would love to be a uh, person who creates this music on this baritone guitar with a slide that's relaxing to listen to, sort of harmonically interesting and beautiful to listen to and I need to develop that. And sitting with this guitar is a pleasure so it's not difficult to try and learn. So yeah, this is this guitar. This is why I spend probably 50, 60% of my time um, playing this guitar when I'm not on the channel. I find videos that have the baritone don't do as well. Obviously fewer people play them. Um, but yeah, this is a, a little look into my world of, of what I'm really at my heart, what I'm feeling about my music. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Let's play out and um oh i tell you what let's do a one minute section on how i create this sound um, if you're interested so i'm playing through the two rock ts1 which is a dumbbell inspired amp it hasn't got any reverb so in the reverb in the fx loop we've got this um, univerb which has got a really good spring reverb i enjoy it and also I'm using this Analog Man delay, which is just on a very short delay and it just adds a bit of extra width and loveliness to it. And then I'm using the SM Fuzz and I prefer Fuzz with an overdrive after it. And I, I think I'll make a video about that. Some people do and some people don't. We could explore how it works, but I'm using, um, in this case, the Mythos Mjolnir, which I also have a compressor in the chain after the Fuzz and all together it just helps to roll off, create sustain, but there's still plenty of dynamics in here. Um, you know, good quality pedals, amazing amplifier, amazing guitar, you get all those dynamics retained, but you can create a sound that's not harsh, um, and I just adore it. So actually I'm gonna edit this video and then spend the rest of the day just playing and trying to learn new stuff on this guitar. All right, um, see you on the next one. Cheers. Thank you. 